What's up? Welcome to another What You Think. This is going to be on, I guess I'll have to get used to saying it, the Astro Militarum. They'll always be the Imperial Guard to me, but for new players out there, I don't want to confuse them, so Astro Militarum. And indeed, they used to be called the Imperial Guard. Uh, this force recently got its 8th edition codex, which is pretty cool. And I figured, why not do a What You Think about them? Uh, not so much on the codex specifically in terms of any codex rulings or unit entries or characters or the like, but on the whole, the Astro Militarum has a faction that got a codex. So they're interesting. Um, you're basically looking at World War One. So from World War One forwards in terms of military units shoved into the 41st millennium with LAS rifles is what you're basically looking at with the Astro Militarum in a very, very watered-down nutshell. So, that's what you got. Standard people. Standard Joe and Jane Guardsmen out there uh, fighting the faceless horrors of the Xenos, such as Tyrannids and Orcs and the unknown uh, unknowables of the Necrons, the Eldar, the Tau, the Chaos Forces even, they have come a long way in the story of what an Astro Militarum Force is. Back in the day, they were literally throwaway forces. Winter Assault said it best that we die for the Emperor and we die well. But, you know, they still do that, but it was also a case of, oh, there was chaos encountering on this planet. All the Imperial Guard regiments were going to get mind scrubbed, servitor made, or just outright executed because of that. And there's been recounting not just of the Imperial Guard or the Astro Militarum, I should say, but also of, of Chaos's corruption also uh, to a certain degree. So you don't have that quite happening anymore or nowhere near how rampant it was. What you still have is a common person fighting in the horrors of the 41st millennium. And this uh, strikes a core with a lot of people. There's a lot of people who like to collect the Astro Militarum. And their power is pretty, pretty great as well. Um... I remember end of fourth into fifth, what was called leaf blower imperial guard lists because it was imperial guard at that time. Uh, these leaf blower lists of the Astro Militarum were just wreaking havoc on the tournament scene and all that. Uh, so you're not looking at a force that oh great I'm playing a a, a weakened force in comparison to everything else. Not necessarily. You're playing a force that's going to feel very mundane, but at the same time uh, also kind of alien to you because. Um, it's like standard military doctrine did a complete 180 and went back to mass numbers of people meat grinding it until you get it done. So uh, that's why you got a whole lot of kind of interesting uh, Astro Militarum memes out there. You know, it's like two regiments died taking a hill. This indeed is a great victory. You know what I mean? It's stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of regiments in, in the galaxy of the Imperium. Because basically a planet is going to tie the forces. Almost all of them. Space Marine homeworlds are exempt from this. Mechanical worlds are basically exempt from this. And, and other big producing worlds that produce something, maybe they uh, make a lot of agriculture. There's certain exemptions to this, but by and large, if you don't have a major export, your major export is going to be military might in the form of regimental forces. Some are trained better than others, that's for sure. Conscripts aren't even trained. They're told to point the gun this way, and that's about it. Um, other regimental forces are considered very well trained, such as the Morty and Iron Guard, Death Corps, Krieg, the Cadians, and so on. You have a lot of variance in the quality of your regiments from different regimental worlds and different regimental standing forces. Um, the Ashram Militarum not only represents this, the Ashram Militarum represents planetary defense forces in terms of if you wanted to play a PDF force, as it's known, you'd be playing Ashram Militarum. If you wanted to make a penal legion force of a whole bunch of uh, convicts that uh, were going to get executed or worked to death anyway, the need arise for more bodies on the battlefield, there are penal legions in 40k. Basically, people in their in their prison uh, fatigues with shackles on them a bit uh, with explosive collars on themselves being shepherded in by scary commissars and other loyalist stormtrooper style of forces and supported by things that are more uh, trusted in, in heavier equipment 
for the most part, they go into battle as well. If you think about it, a a uh, convict that's probably going to get killed anyway, given the opportunity to go kill things until you die, probably going to take it. So not that they have a choice anyway. But uh, you have standing militia forces uh, that are not quite to the caliber of regiments, not quite just for PDF, but they, 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 they make do. And uh, everything in between. So it covers a wide breadth of stuff in the Imperium. Now, where Space Marines are, your surgical scalpel style of spear thrust in the enemy's throat, the um, Hashemol Tarm is the Looney Tunes giant mallet hammer smashing on an enemy. That's what it is. They don't have their own naval forces. They have support craft, aircraft, you could say. So does the Imperial Navy. But there is the Imperial Navy that is in charge of all the naval forces in space. The Astro Militarum, unless this got retconned recently, didn't really have standing ships of their own. They were they were one cog in the war machine of the Imperium, and the other one is the Imperial Navy. So they get shipped around and then dropped off in mass to go fight and die. And you truly do mobilize a lot of Astro Militarum forces. Or a Space Marine chapter may go full bore into a sector with their entire strength and just destroy. Or they may send a a, um, a company or a half a company with some support elements somewhere to do something and succeed in doing so. With the Astro Militarum, you're sending regiment after regiment after regiment together as one. You're sending line rifle regiments with artillery regiments, with armored regiments, with uh, uh, armored transport regiments, and, and so forth. You're sending a veritable pile, a, a mass amount of different types of regiments together to form full-blown battalions and everything and fight the enemy. Seas of Racks, millions of Death Corps Creek regiments, oh, not regiments, but millions of Death Corps Creek with dozens upon dozens of regiments were fighting, and they were supported by other stuff as well. The Third War of Armageddon, the Armageddon Steel Legion regiments, basically all in mass because it's their world, plus other regiments, plus Space Marine chapters to the fold. Even in campaigns that are just astro military campaigns without Space Marine support or Mechanicum support, really, you're looking at multiple regiments striking as one. Uh, very rare is it just a singular regiment going and doing something by itself unsupported because they're not. Most regiments aren't made that way. Most regiments are. You are nothing but line infantry. You will support the artillery regiment, and you will both be supported in supporting the armored regiment and so forth. So, interesting setups. Um, so I kind of didn't really go into what I thought. I went off on a tangent of the concept of what they are, and I find it interesting. Um, I think there's a lot of potential for the Astro Militarum in terms of collecting them. Their fluff is set up to really have a whole lot of variance in what your regiments look like. Just look at the established regiments that have some models. The Mordian Iron Guard, very different from the Armageddon Steel Legion, which is very different from the Death Corps of Krieg. Elysians are very different from everybody else, too. Cadians and Catachans are different. Devotion Firstborn, different. There's a lot of options and capability here to really feel the wholly different looking uh, Astro Militarum Force. Unfortunately, this model support from both Forge World and GW is limited to specific regiments only in terms of true full on model support these days. You got to look at third party upgrade bits out there to do infantry as best you can. But there is some support that way. Plus, you can make up your regiment and then start doing some kit bashing and try and get it done that way. But uh, I feel there's a lot of potential here for collecting how you want. It's just limited by the model support, which is different from Space Marines, right? Because Space Marines, you know, even Chaos, even with their Chaos mutations, have a certain frame, a certain silhouette that's very identifiable. And for Space Marine chapters in the Imperium, most of it, barring minor bits here and there, which aren't really necessary to kind of get the point across, is just a color palette swap, right? 
when we come right down to it. With the Astra Militarum, it's a whole different look. The Vostrian Firstborn look different from the Valhalla and Ice Warriors, like I mentioned, so on and so forth. So uh, it's a very interesting force. It's a force that um, I looked at and I thought was impressive with their tanks. You know, their tanks look cool and all that, but not my cup of tea for a sci-fi force. You know, it's not your standard, what you'd expect. You know, Star Wars with their stormtroopers and the like, at least they, they look befitting and... Um, part of that universe now the Astro Militar looks part of 40k's universe but it's very kind of interesting that it does so because they also look like you could pull them out of a world war ii scene almost <laughs> some of them so uh it's a very interesting setup and it really kind of shows the the callous inhuman cold nature of the imperium where blood is a currency and they spend it liberally uh their point, their their part, their point, their whole shtick is to fight and die for the emperor, and die, and die, and die until they win, if you will. It's it, it is the ultimate meat grinder force in the Imperium. So that's kind of my all over the place take on the Ashramilitarum. A lot of potential here for a lot of flavors and a lot of different um, kind of feels you can get out of your regimental force. Uh, you can kit bash as best you can. You can take models here and there, green stuff, it, get their party products, whatever the case is. There's a lot of variance you can have with different regimental forces, and that is pretty cool. Uh, this is also a way in which you can represent an Inquisitor's personal army, which they do have, uh, some of them. Uh, and it would be basically Ashramal Tarn forces. So you got that going on. Plus, this also covers the, the Tempestus Scion stuff, those kind of special forces, Ashramal Tarn, which are kind of a new thing. So it's all in the book. Um, and I find it, well, for the most part, it's all in the book. I, I have to imagine. I haven't actually gotten my hands on one to look at. But um, still, it's, it's pretty cool. And... Um, it's a pretty cool force. It's not my cup of tea outside of the really big tanks, which are cool. But you can have a lot of fun with these guys. And just because they're not super soldiers or crazy aliens with robotic tech or not doesn't mean they can't get the job done. It's just a much more grisly, grim fate to befall the regiments uh, for the most part. Anyways, uh, that's my thoughts on them kind of all over the place. What are your thoughts on the Ashramil Tom? Uh, militarum kind of butchered that word there but let me know what you think in the comment section below because why not anyways that's it so thanks for sticking through it and until the next one take it easy